Hello everyone, welcome to another video tour with me, Juan, from 5D Guide. Today is July 23rd, 2017, and I'm going to bring you to a space in New York that is very popular, is very new as well, and is very emotional, can stir up a, a lot of emotions on people who visit. This is the World Trade Center where the Twin Towers were located. In fact, behind me, this space that you see, this is the memorial, a place called Reflecting Absence. I'm going to turn the camera and I'm going to focus it on this building over here, this building in front of me. This place is called the Oculus. The Oculus is a train station that brings you to New Jersey uh, on the other side of the Hudson. We're in Manhattan right now. New Jersey on the other side, the trains that you connect to here bring you to that other state. Now I'm going to go into this building inside, it's spectacular, the building in itself is wonderful to visit, it's wonderful to see, very expensive building too. And inside they have a very particular art exhibit, uh, since it opened last year they have been organizing art exhibits and the one that they have on right now has been here for a month. It was here from June 23rd up until July 23rd. Today is the last day and I want to take a look at it before they take it down. So to in essence build a memory of this very important work of art. I'm going through the doors. I entered from the western side of the building right across from the memorial pools from reflecting absence. If you look at it, well from here we can take a look at the interior, then there's the lower level and all of those paintings that you see, that is actually what we will be looking at. I will be going down the steps, we'll be looking at it from different perspectives as well. I'll get down to the lower level and take a closer look at each of the panels that depict some very popular works of art from the western world. So walking down and looking down We see this exhibit, it's called Up Close, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. So basically the works that we'll be looking at today are reproductions of the paintings that appear on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel over at the Vatican in Italy. There are 34 of the paintings paintings from the book of, that depicts stories in the book of Genesis and then there's also a larger work that depicts the last judgment. Now these are paintings that were created, designed by the great Michelangelo Bonarotti, a man who lived, an artist who lived in Italy in the 16th century. He was commissioned from 1504 up until 1508 and then later on in around 15 in the 1530s he was called back again to depict this other part this rendition that you see here this presentation of the last judgment as we get closer to the work we will try to put this into context this is an exhibit that will be here for just one month today is the last day it will be traveling to other places in the United States and uh, I'm guessing that it'll be staying there for only about one month as well. The organization that made this possible is called Westfield. Westfield is an organization that operates shopping centers all over the world. In fact, all of the shopping spaces that you see here are basically managed by that organization, by Westfield here at the World Trade Center. Alright, so I'll be walking down so that we can take a look at the exhibits. If you enter to, into the building from the western side, there's a couple of steps that bring you down to the lower level. I'll use the electric escalators going down, not all the way down. To go all the way down, you have to turn around, walk a little bit more, and then you will be at another set of escalators that will bring you to the lower level. So that space down there where the people are walking. Up 
close, the name of the exhibit is bringing us close to these incredible works of art that are extremely important to the Western tradition and especially to Catholicism. Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is a building that was built in the Vatican in the, if I'm not mistaken, in the first half of the 16th century, right by the middle of the 16th century, by Pope Sixtus. That's why it's called the Sistine Chapel. If you look at the arrangement of the display, there are several blocks within a big block, a big square section. You can pick up the square dynamic from this elevation. Would have been better to pick it up from the upper level from where I was before, but nonetheless from this point you can still pick it up. So you can pick up, by the way it's a paid exhibit, you have to pay $20 to go in. If you are a student or a senior, then you have to pay $15 from the um, advertisement that I encountered online about this particular program people are not happy that you have to pay to go in but you don't necessarily have to pay to go into the space if you walk around it you are able to see a lot of the of the representations of the stories that are represented in the works that they decided to reproduce and put up on display over here now if you go to Italy, if you visit the Sistine Chapel, they only allow you for, allow, for about 15 minutes into the building and then they, you have to come out, no photographs, no videos, they, you come out, they clean the air and they let another group in. So at least here in New York in this particular rendition, in this particular presentation, people who go, who pay the $20 can get as close as they, as they want. You get an audio guide as well that tells the stories of each of the paintings presented. But if you walk outside from the edges, as you can see people walking by, you can see a lot of the works, a lot of the paintings. Now, many of the panels, all of the panels actually, nine panels total, nine blocks are geometric forms. As you can see, this one over here is a parallelogram. And there's also a couple of triangles, rhomboid, and I think there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, a pentagon down over there, and a couple of other figures as well, a rectangle if I'm not mistaken, and they are all encased within this squared form. A lot, in a lot of the, uh, of the art of today and the building designs of today, there's a lot with this geometry. Uh, now, let's walk down to the, to the lower level where the, by where the people are walking so that we can get as close as we possibly can. I won't pay $20 to go in to this space. I will get as close as I possibly can and take a look at what are the stories that are represented in each of these particular uh, presentation blocks. Uh, some of them you might recognize. Some of them are very, very popular. While others are kind of intriguing very interesting exhibition. Let's go and take a look. We're going to go down from this particular side. This is the northern side of the Oculus. We'll be taking the escalators down to the lower level. You can tell that most of the people here are visiting. Usually New Yorkers, if you're just going to stand there, you stand to the right and you allow for a space for people who are walking non-stop. Alright, so once you reach the lower level, this is the or one of the closest ways that you can get to the work without having to pay $20 to go in. As I mentioned and as you saw, the name of the exhibit up close, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. The next place that this exhibit is going to visit is going to be over in New Jersey, Paramus, New Jersey. Westfield operates a center in Paramus, New Jersey and that is where they will be going. So looking at the 
um, at the exhibition blocks we can pick up the paintings that Michelangelo rendered in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. If we look, let me try to zoom in in this direction there, we can see the fall of men and the fall of men and expulsion from paradise. So over there we see the figure of Adam after he ate from the forbidden uh, from the from the forbidden from the forbidden fruit. There's also a representation of Eve over there. The serpent intertwined into this tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we see an angel um, exposing or exposing Adam from paradise. Let's walk around it. As we walk around it, we will continue with the story. So again, these are basically stories that you see in the book of Genesis. So the beginning of the Bible, a story of beginning. And there's also the representation of the end, how all of this will end once time is over, once time is up, and Jesus Christ comes back. Now, there's also representations of uh, several prophets. From this particular site, we can see the prophet Jeremiah in total. Uh, Michelangelo depicted four of the prophets, who, which in the, in, the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, professed of the coming of the Messiah. Some of the panels also depict the ancestors of Jesus Christ. As we walk around, we will be able to pick up and see some of those other, some of those ancestors. The ancestors of Christ, Serubabel. So in the central section, they have some of the most popular um, renderings. For example, we saw the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. And here we see the creation of men. This is one of the most popular um, paintings, so one of the most popular reproductions of any work of art in the world. And there we see the father figure, we see the Godhead, basically giving that spark of spirit to his creation, to the first man, to Adam. Closer to us here from the edge, we can see also the prophet Jonah. Again, there's a total of 400, uh, sorry, 300 uh, renderings in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and it took Michelangelo from uh, 40, from 1504 up until 1508 to complete and it's interesting because Michelangelo wasn't he didn't see himself as much as a painter as he did see himself m more as a sculptor and but he surpassed and uh, surpassed any expectation in these works over here incredible works now in addition to the prophets, there was another group that there's another group that was re, that is represented that the picture talk about the coming of the Messiah, and these are called the Sibyls. Sibyls were sort of pagan prophets, and they themselves talked about the coming of the Messiah. So what is done is basically they give a representation. He gives a presentation of uh, of people or prophets from the tradition, from the Old Testament talking about the, the coming of Christ and he also presents, represents these figures, the civils that talked about the coming of the Messiah and were not Christian themselves or associated with the Judeo-Christian tradition. Okay more advertisement, more of the name of the exhibit over here on this side. I'm walking around. I'm walking around the square and but if you pay you can go and see the um, you can get as close as you can potentially can to these incredible works which traditionally are hanging from very high uh, over at the Sistine Chapel. Here we see the prophet Joel Joe, another one of those prophets that talked about the coming of the Messiah, and here we see another Sibyl, the Cumean Sibyl. Cumea is somewhat today is the Naples area in Italy. Now notice the figures. These figures are incredibly muscular. Now 
Now, uh, in the more central section, uh, over here we can also see the creation of the sun, moon and earth. There we see the father figure, we see the representation of the sun. Let me zoom back in. Now, because I won't be able to get as close as possible to, uh, to the interior of the space, Let's take a look at this particular side of the depiction of uh, judgment. It's not the most convenient, but I'll try to zoom in as much as I possibly can. On this particular side, we basically see the damned. On the great judgment, there will be a great deal of uh, people, of beings, that will be damned and basically will be going to hell. And this particular rendering, Michelangelo created in 1534, between 1508 and 1534, a lot happened in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic tradition, in the Catholic world. This is the time when the Reformation is taking place, and the Church is splitting, and the Protestantism is taking hold. Here we see those uh, figures of uh, of the damned, and as you get further up. You can see some sort of figures that don't want to uh, that don't want to go to hell, basically, but they're being pulled down by demons, nonetheless. As you can see with this figure over here, with an incredible sense of hopelessness uh, in their face. Further up, we see representations of uh, of former saints. For example, this figure over here, right at the center, is a representation of Saint Bartholomew. Saint Bartholomew was flayed alive and we can see him uh, holding basically his skin on his left hand and it is believed that this is, well not believed, but actually a portrait of Michelangelo himself. Now why would Michelangelo uh, represent himself in this particular manner? Well I've read some information, ab uh, I've read some, some inf info about this and what I've come across is that towards the end, uh, by the 1530s, Michelangelo had acquired an inc incredible fame. I mean, these works were reproduced, the printing press had been invented at the time, and his works were reproduced. And he saw himself, he didn't want to see himself as the, uh, as the, as the celebrity artist of sorts, basically saw himself as a shell, as a vessel through which uh, creativity was channeled through him. He wasn't necessarily interested in the popularity that his work brought him, so basically he represented himself in this particular uh, form uh, without any substance inside. That whatever he was basically communicating the idea that whatever he was doing um, was so that it could serve a higher purpose. In fact, uh, later on, after 1534, uh, the St. Peter's Basilica was completed. The men who commissioned these works, uh, Pope Julius II, not only commissioned the painting of the Sistine Chapel, but also he also rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica. And towards the end, one of the last things that was completed was uh, the dome. And Michelangelo was the the architect of that dome. For that creation, he didn't charge the church. He basically did it for free as a service to the church. This dynamic connects with this particular presentation here. He wanted to serve, use his art so that, use his art so that he could serve a higher purpose. And there we see him in the form of the skin of Saint Bartholomew, just the skin, no substance. Now, there's also some representations of, um, of figures from classical mythology. For example, here uh, in the lower section, uh, where the figures that are basically being damned to hell, we see this representation of this figure paddling the boat. This is a mythological figure. I think his name is Carrion. Carrion is basically the ferryman of the damned to the afterlife. Another representation associated with uh, Greek mythology and antiquity is the figure of Jesus Christ himself who dominates the upper section of the fresco. And there this particular presentation that we see of Jesus Christ is directly associated or connected to the Apollo Belvedere. Uh, the Apollo Belvedere was a sculpture from antiquity 
that has been greatly admired throughout the ages because of its because of the artistic achievements that are presented in the work and uh, so here we see Jesus Christ uh, equated to the Apollo Belvedere in the Bible there's uh, uh, Jesus Christ himself is described as the son of righteousness. The god Apollo was the, so, the, god, the, the sun god of antiquity. So here we see this association of Jesus Christ with that association to Apollo from antiquity. Now we're going to walk around to the other side of the world so that we can take a closer look at the other side of the of the last judgment section but also take a look at the other uh, panels that are here at the lower level depicting the story of creation. Now I'm on the back section and from this particular side we can see the representation of the separation of light and darkness. In the central section we can see the God figure in this uh, swirling pic pink robe and on one side we can see dark on the upper section and in the lower section we can see the representation of light. Now notice the figures adorning the edges as well. The way that Michelangelo represented these figures are they basically represent all the possible movements that can be accomplished by the human form. It's incredible, over 300 figures total, all of them in different positions. This incredible mastery of artistic expression. Now, the back of the Last Judgment panel has this particular pattern to it that is not too much, it's very minimalist, but walking to the station itself and looking at this, it's, uh, it's almost mesmerizing to see this particular gigantic square from this particular side as you come into the station from the eastern side. Now I'm going to walk around now to the northern edge of the particular display space and take a look at the other works that are on exhibit. From this particular side we can see God separating water from the heavens. So there we go, there we see the God figure and he's basically separating water from heaven. Further down we can see the creation of Eve. There is Eve. And here we see another story from the book of Genesis, Judith and all of Furness. Judith, a figure from antiquity. Her story presented in the Bible decapitated this man named Holofernes. Holofernes and Judith have been the topic of many, many renditions, many, many presentations of art. Now, on this particular, well, let me get a little bit further away so that maybe we can take a better look at this particular side of the last judgment panel so that we can maybe see what it is that is actually going on over here. When it comes to these particular video tours, I particularly like to focus on sculpture rather than uh, paintings, murals or frescoes. That's because of the obvious uh, way, because of the obvious manner in which this presents. It's kind of difficult to pick it up, but nonetheless you can pick up an idea and if we were definitely were able to go to the Sixteen Chapel we wouldn't be able to get this close and I wouldn't be able to build this presentation. Now this is the other side of the uh, last judgment panel and here we can pick up the dead rising from their graves. So this is what is happening, the resurrection of the dead as you can see over here. As we go up, you can see some of these figures being picked up by angels and being taken up to heaven. Some of them are floating up to heaven. Some of them, well, this, these particular two figures over here are holding rosary beads and they're being pulled up. Basically, this communicates the idea that if you pray, that if you recite the rosary, this could be a great help in helping you reach heaven when this great day comes. So 
we see figures basically entering heaven and as you go up and uh, it gets more colorful there you go here you see figures now in heaven and at the very top here we can pick up the vehicle that allowed for people to reach heaven the great sacrifice Continue walking around, we can see more of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. Here we see Josiah. Now there's also literature accompanying these display cases. For example here, this one for Josiah reads Josiah, also known as Joshiyahu, was the king of Judah from 640 to 609 BC after his father Ammon was assassinated. He ascended to the throne at the age of just eight. Josiah was ultimately killed in a battle with the advancing Egyptians, a lamentation of Jeremiah, an image of which can also be found in the ceiling frescoes, is dedicated to Josiah's memory. This painting yet again shows a small family, a motif used in the series of ancestors time and time again as a reference to the Holy Family. So many elements, many uh, dynamics to these compositions. This work, as we just read, represents Josiah. The representation of the three figures connects to the dynamic of the of the Holy Family and the idea of the Trinity as well: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many dimensions to these particular works. We see here the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah, Zechariah, one of the four prophets that were represented in the in the ceiling. So, four prophets and the four sibyls. There on the other side here we can pick up the Eritrean sibyl. Let me see if I can get a better view from this particular angle. Over here. The Eritrean sibyl, the sibyls were, all of them were female figures. But looking at them, you're not really able to tell that these were women. They're very muscular. Now their faces, some of them are delicate features, so you might be able to tell there. Another view of the creation of Eve over there. Look at her right leg, almost as if it's stepping out, out of Adam's rib cage, which according to the story in the Bible, this is how she was created, out of a, out of a rib from Adam. Here in this particular section we see the brazen serpent. Look at all this tangling and merging of bodies and the very top over there you see the representation of the serpent, the devil itself. Alright, let me walk around to the last section then we will be back at the front and this will be the end of this video tour for today. Here we see more of the ancestors of Christ. We see Salmon over here. And in the more central section from this particular angle we see the Great Flood. This was a time when humanity had reached such a point of wickedness that God destroyed earth. After the great flood, God promised that he won't destroy the, air, the earth again, not until the coming of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, the earth will be destroyed again, but this time not with water, but rather with fire. From this particular side, in this particular panel, we can see the prophet Ezekiel represented. And the literature reads, the priest and prophet Ezekiel lived in the early 6th century BC. Michelangelo depicts him as an old man who was engrossed in his reading, but has now suddenly turned around to look behind him. 
Ezekiel's gaze is focused on the hands of the small accompanying figure in the background which are stretching up towards the heavens. They refer to the source of God's message. Gestures play a central role in a large number of the ceiling frescoes painted by Michelangelo. Ezekiel's open right hand, for example, can also be understood as a gesture of both, of both amazement and readiness to receive the message. So, yeah, figures that even in their hand gestures communicate stories and communicate particular concepts. Oftentimes, as we saw in the other ones, presented in threes, communicating the idea of the Holy Trinity. So Ezekiel accompanied by two more figures, figures of angels behind him. Spanning a little bit further east, we can again see the fall of men and expulsion from paradise. We see Adam to the right, he is leaving, he looks like he's ashamed. He knows that what he did was wrong and to the right hand side we see the serpent handing, uh, handing the forbidden fruit to Eve who is lying down. Alright, let's come back to the front of the exhibit and conclude this video tour. There we have it, nine uh, display sections with the presentation of 34 figures from uh, what appears on the roof of the 16th chapel over at the Vatican in Rome. Right, that is going to be it for today's video tour. I hope you've enjoyed. I will be preparing more video tours of other sites in New York, art that is temporary and art that is on permanent display. To keep connected, log on to facebook.com forward slash 5dguide and like the page for this is where I'll be posting those videos. If you are on YouTube, if you're watching this video via YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel for this is where I will also be uploading those videos and presenting these informative video sections of the things, the creative things that we have to see here in this incredible metropolis. Have a wonderful afternoon or morning depending where you are and when you are watching this video. Bye-bye.